Hello and welcome back to NorCal 715. Today I've got this Panasonic microwave and it's got the dreaded H98 of death. It's got you locked out. I've already got a water load in the cavity here. I can go reset. Minute start. All I get is that little blurb. So looking over here, I get a little fan spin and I do get the light for about a half a second. So the first thing we need to do is reset that lockout so that we can actually get into the microwave. And I just happen to have some instructions on how to do that right here. All right, so let's do that. Stop reset once. Open the door. Keep pressing start for more than two seconds till we get a beep. Press stop reset pad three times. Press start pad button once. And it says in, I don't know if you can see that on the display, it showed EEP, I imagine for EEPROM. And press stop reset to return to initial page. Okay, close the door. We'll hit quick minute. Now we're timing. So let's go ahead and take a look at our current over here. It's hanging upside down. Showing uh, alternating between 3.2 amps zero virtually up to three amps and it's going to stop here in a second i think it runs 23 seconds in this situation before it faults out now it's running 30 seconds so far it will fault and it will show the h98 display again there it just it just stopped No H98 display. We'll hit the current one more time. Realize it is upside down, sorry. 0.4, three amps, 3.3. It's just pulsing on and off. It's trying to run. Getting some humming out of the magnetron. This one is an inverter microwave, so it just has this inverter circuit down here, as opposed to having a large iron core transformer. So, there it just shut off again. It knows there is a problem. Has it heated the water? Nope. Still as cold as when we started. All right, so next one I'm gonna do is I'm going to very carefully open one of these connectors to expose the uh, plug inside. I'm gonna grab a high voltage probe and put it on there and see if the magnet or if the inverter board is delivering high voltage to the magnetron. Okay, so I've got my fluke high voltage probe here saying uh, 6 kV peak max. We're gonna hit start. I've got my probe open here. Lightly touch it on there. Take a look at the meter. Now ah, we're showing 4,400 volts. Pulsing on and off. 4,500, 4,400, off. It's trying to, the inverter's uh, starting and stopping. That's why we're seeing the uh, current change up here. Go from three amps down to 0.4. So I think at this point we can safely say that we've got a bad magnetron. So let's go ahead and take the magnetron out. And that's done by removing this cover right here. This bracket's gotta come loose at least. Uh, be warned, there is a hidden screw right up in here you gotta take out. Once this cover's off, then we can get to the access screws. You can see them down in there, two on the right-hand side, and there's gonna be two over here under this cover. So let's go ahead and take that off. Okay, so there I've got the cover off. You can see the two mounting screws on this side now. Be sure that when you go ahead and disconnect these terminals that you short something against it. Uh, there could be residual voltage built up on this. I, I'm not sure if it has a bleeder resistor in the uh, inverter board down here or not. But now that I've discharged them, we can go ahead and pull them loose off the magnetron. It's still come. It's got a release tab in it. Although when the plastic's on, you really can't press that little release tab in there at all. So let's go ahead and take the four screws out. I've already disconnected the uh, temperature. Uh, I believe it's just a thermistor feedback to the board to tell if the magnetron has got too hot. So let's go ahead and take those screws out and take a peek at the magnetron. Okay, magnetron is out and I see the problem right off the bat. The ceramic magnet right here definitely uh, cracked in a couple of places. So it no longer has the correct 
poles to the magnet and that would definitely mess up the magnetron. There's two big magnets in these and uh, typically if I scrap one of these out I'll uh, take the magnetron apart or oh, even the top one up there's got a little crack in it too. Hard to see. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's go on uh, eBay and see if we can find a replacement 2M261-M39 magnetron. If I'm not mistaken I may have already replaced this magnetron once already. Uh, last time I got one it was just about 20 bucks so if you do it yourself it makes sense these are pretty good microwaves I checked this one hours wrote down the time here 553 hours as of March 30th of 2019 and so here's the instructions on uh, getting the uh, hours out of it there's the instructions on uh, how to uh, reset it as well as the instructions on how to clear the uh, H97 or H98 code. Okay, so here on eBay, I have found a seller who has them for $24.99. He's sold 55 of them. There's still four available, so I'll probably go ahead and get one on order. And that's from the seller Aplera, A-P-L-E-R-A, 98.8% positive, 7,392 reviews or uh, feedbacks. So I'll probably go ahead and get one ordered. Okay, so not even in addition to getting one replacement magnetron, I decided I'd go ahead and get two of them. And I'm not sure what the date codes are on them. The magnets are in good shape. They're not cracked on these guys. So we'll go ahead and put those in. In addition to that, because these have considerable wear on them, I always have spare uh, door latches on hand. I keep a spare push button. Goes inside right in here. That's this piece right there. And also I'm going to replace this piece, which is what holds the switches and is what actually actuates that door hook assembly. So I'll go ahead and put a new magnetron in there, or replace this plastic assembly as uh, the doors, uh, the door hook wears grooves into these right in here because it's, it's a really cheap plastic. So we'll get this baby back up in tip top condition in just a minute. So let's start by very simply removing the door latch, well not the door latch, but it's the receptor for the door hook. And so, to get these switches out, basically, uh, these little tabs right here, you just lift up and down, and the switches will actually pop right out. So now that that's free, I'll show you what I was talking about. Look at that groove that's cut into there. Not so much on the upper one. But look at that deep groove cut into the bottom one. Uh, I think the new one is supposed to be made out of a little bit tougher plastic, so this doesn't happen in the future. So let's go ahead and put it in place, and we'll go ahead and snap the switches into it. Get that up out of the way. All right, there it's all set. Now we'll just go ahead and lay it back into position. Little pin lines up in the slot. And then you just put the screws in it. All right, next we'll focus on uh, getting a different magnetron in here. I just went ahead and put these screws back in place as to not lose them. Now make sure if you're replacing this magnetron that you, uh, the leading edge of the fan blades, uh, it's important that they not have a lot of schmoo on them because that will create turbulence and uh, disrupt the airflow. So I'm just wiping off the leading edge. I don't really care about the blade themselves, whether it has stuff on it or not. Now, these are always fun to put in because the magnet wants to suck the screw in. So I'm not gonna torque them down yet. Very carefully try and get those in there without the magnet sucking them away, which has happened in the past. Make sure they're good and tight. Also, make sure that your uh, replacement magnetron has an RF gasket right here. If it doesn't, uh, the uh, RF energy could leak out of here and potentially do damage. Next, we're gonna put this cover back on. And as I recall, it just kind of slips in here. One screw on top, one screw into the magnetron. And then the one hidden screw Maybe you can see it in the camera. I gotta bend it up anyhow. 
unscrew into the bottom. I'll hook up our leads over here for the light. Place the thermal sensor on the magnetron. And we'll go ahead and hook up the power leads back on the magnetron again. But those were down here, the power leads, just snap those back on. So everything's all hooked back up right now. We'll go ahead and get the amp clamp on here and we'll see what happens. All right, here we go, first fire up. So I'm gonna go down and give it, I'll give it two minutes. Start, take a look at the current meter over here. 15.7 amps. That's about what I would expect, 15, 16 amps. So I do have water load in here. So let's see how our water is doing. Ooh, it's hot, there's steam coming out. All right, so I think we're good to go. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. The H98 of death repair magnetron replacement on your Panasonic inverter microwave. If this video has helped you, please consider making a donation to my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash NorCal715. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. With your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.